Gods and goddesses, Archangel Michael, I ask you please to stand at the head of the body. Thank you. My clients come to me because they feel what they call a dark cloud over them. My office is what I call a spirit room. I see entities everywhere I go. Jaguar spirit, I ask you please. One of the things that I have to do every day is keep my vibration high. It is time to release this karma connection. I'm Rachel and I'm an exorcist. When I was a kid, I saw ent what I call entity. I don't actually call it demons very much, but what I call entity, I just assumed everybody could do that because I was very young. So I started talking about it. I just started saying that I was seeing it and found out very quickly that other people don't and that you don't talk about it. And if you do, you're crazy. So I hid that aspect of myself for a long, long time. I've been doing this for almost a decade now. I don't charge. Let's, let's get that off the table. <laughs> it, it's my business, but it's not my business. <laughs> I could charge people, and I could charge people a lot of money, but I don't, and the reason I don't is because I want everyone who walks into this room to be equal. I work in all religions. I work with all people. This is a very accepting and tolerant space. What I'm doing for people is what I call a psychic surgery in a way. This man is coming through as like middle-aged, fairly tall man. So tonight I invited a bunch of friends over for a seance, which I host sometimes. What that means is they've come over to try and contact some deceased loved ones. Uh, the first time I came, I didn't mean to bring anything, but I wore a shawl that was my grandmother's. And um, she did come through, and she did tell me to break up with my boyfriend, and I did. Yeah. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so when the opportunity presented itself, I was like, this is, sounds very interesting. And uh, I also would love to talk to my grandparents who passed away. Entities are very different from deceased people. Um, another real common misconception is that deceased people can possess you when in fact that's not really how they work. Now they can attach and be annoying. That is true, and deceased people love to chat. The pushy as hell ghosts, they come through first. <laughs> Those who were kind of a pain in the ass in life are gonna be a pain in the ass in death. It's not changed. <laughs> when I hit 30, I had a very minor traumatic experience. You know, the homeless guy, who was screaming on the corner, I was seeing who he was screaming at. And it was just nonstop. And so at that point, I had to make a decision. I was either, you know, going to check myself in or sit down, open myself up, and ask whoever gave me this ability to see this what I was supposed to do with it. I sat down with a scotch and was like, okay, you know, let me know. There was really only one thing to do with it, and it was to help people. Okay, the first person that I see is coming in is a female. Female. This is not a white woman. This could be. Could be. This is a woman who's like, I am not white. <laughs> that might be you. <laughs> she was like, listen, let me tell you something. Um, my grandmother came through. Rachel said that the person was telling her, like, I am not a white lady. And that's literally my grandmother. Uh, she's very much like, I'm black. She is saying to you that you have everything you need to do the thing that's in your brain, that thing that you want to do. You got to stop doubting that. That thing that you are like, I got to get there, I got to go there, you got it. My grandmother, she died of cancer and she was like a, a badass. She wasn't afraid of death. You always wonder what happens to people after they pass. It felt really good to like hear that she's doing good and that she's so proud of me, which really means a lot. Pain is the universal equalizer. That is the truth. We all experience it, we all suffer. You can't pay your way out of it. You can't be famous enough to get out of it. You can't be a nobody enough to get out of it. You get it. An exorcist takes what people call demons out of other people. Around 85% of the population is walking around with attachment and possession, and they don't know. There are many different types of entities, from small and um, more leech-like attachments to what you see in movies. And the smallest one, what I call Clives, I call them that because they look like Clive Barker drawings to me, and they uh, amplify feelings. So, you know, if you're sad, you're depressed. If you're depressed, you're suicidal. If you have anger, you have rage. Then we go all the way up to 
rates that are uh, what usually cause night terrors. They usually cause sleep paralysis. Tricksters who are exactly what they sound like, you know, they form symbiotic relationships with their hosts, all the way up to what I call a realm walker, which is, from what I've seen, what most people think is the devil or something like this. I, have, I say it that way because I've never seen the devil, but I have seen multiple realm walkers. All right. Yes. Come on in. Hey, how's it going? So, have a seat, get comfy a bit. Does the uh, smoke bother you? No, not at all. Okay, good. Usually it only bothers people with real, like, major demons. Just so you know. <laughs> Fun really? fact. Oh, that's good news. Herbs are a big part of my practice. Some that are about uh, taking entity out, like wolfsbane, uh, blue lotus. And then I have others that I use that are good at putting high frequency back in. Myrrh, like the church uses, they use both. It's because of high frequency. I'd like to have a conversation with you about why you're here. I am here because there's some some trauma that I have that I'm holding on to. I see a wraith with you. Okay. We're gonna take that wraith out, so that's nothing. He's gonna go. But we also are going to take out the trauma that you've held in the body, okay? Yeah through the forehead, through the third eye. I asked the gods and goddesses to take care of any leftover residual smoke, anything left that is hiding in the body, sitting in the body. So when we talk about attachment and possession, we're actually talking about energy. We all have what I call a baseline frequency as we walk about the earth. Everything emits an energy, you know, all things, and, and we're not different. And so when we have trauma, that baseline frequency takes a hit because in our culture, we're not really taught that we have to move through trauma. We instead are told to stuff trauma down. And when we do that, we keep it. And here are these negative entities that wish to attach. Noise agitates entity, so we want to agitate it out of the body. We're, we're using high frequency. We're using everything we can to take it out so that it can be removed totally. Pushing that energy up and out. Allowing that energy to flow up and out. Not keeping it in, not protecting it. And at this time I ask the entity, this is your last opportunity to leave on your own. You may do so. I did feel an energy or something within me that was escaping from me. I felt her energy. I felt genuine concern for whatever is going on negative in my, in my body. And when you feel ready and it's not a rush, you can open your eyes. After performing an exorcism, I don't feel great, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, it's very exhausting. It gives you a lot of body pain. It feels like I've done a ton of exercise. You know, all I want is like a giant pizza <laughs> to myself. I work on my energy a lot. Just finding, you know, really good friends to keep around that are okay with me being this kind of weird person. I work in darkness, that's true. But that doesn't mean I'm queen of the damned. What it really is, it's about healing people out of darkness. It's actually working in light, bringing people out of that darkness into the light. And in order to do that, you do have to work in those dark places. It's scary. It's scary to do this work. This is about helping people. I do believe that what I do is good for the planet. The more negative energy we remove here, the better off we are. It doesn't look that way at the moment, but I promise that they'll get there. No matter how little sleep I still get, if I keep that mindset, it keeps me going.